friends! Welcome to Emily Kate Made This. I am Emily Kate. I'm coming to you from Berlin in Germany. And today's episode is one of a new series, I think. I think it shall be a series. As you will have gathered from the title of this video, I got a knitting machine! I am so excited. <laughs> you don't even know the excitement levels that have to be contained within. So I am Emily from the future because the majority of the rest of the footage will be me from when my beautiful machine arrived. But I will do a bit of a backstory because otherwise it's just me babbling on and being confused. <laughs> so let us go back into the past. Personally, I blame my friend Pauline because she got a knitting machine and we had been talking about them for a while saying how much we would love to get a knitting machine to do the ribbing on our vintage knits and then one day she messaged me saying I have found one and I'm going to pick it up and the fire, the fire within was ignited and so I had a look on, it's like eBay but it's not eBay, it's a German only version of eBay. Uh, hard to explain. But I had a little hunt on there and I also looked on eBay and I found a vintage machine listed. But I, I saw a few but absolutely none of them posted out. There were none in Berlin, there were none in the vicinity of Berlin, they were all distributed mostly down south actually in Germany and they were pick up only and as much as I wanted a machine I was not going to uh, take a train and pay 100 odd euro to go and pick up a machine. They're big, it's over a meter long and really heavy like 10 kilos. So I did not. But then there was one Actually, no, there was one where I live, but the person never replied to me until about three weeks later, so that was not meant to be. But there was one person, and they were in Cologne, and they, was, they said they were happy to ship out. It would just be kind of my own risk, really, because it's a delicate machine, and it's going by post, but I can pay for postage if I want it. So I did, and it arrived, and... There will be footage. Maybe there will be footage and I'll put it over while I'm talking or I'll put my little face in the corner. I'm not sure what I'll do yet. When I was recording I was thinking this is going to be like an epic video and it will be just like Engineering Knits videos and it's... Brace yourselves guys, it's not. <laughs> it's not going to be as wonderful as her videos. They take so much more work than I was mentally prepared to give. I think I need about three tripods and about three cameras just dotted around so that when I'm doing something I don't have to constantly set up a camera and set myself up in front of it whilst I'm going through something relatively stressful. And yes, a knitting machine is not <laughs> the least stressful thing in life. Don't worry darling, I love you very much. But let us, let me introduce you. So I have got a Nitax M2 and it comes from 1956 and I know this because I have the manual. And originally when the parcel arrived the woman said I don't know what it is, I don't know, um, like, anything, I don't know if it works, it just seems like it should do, there's no reason it shouldn't. So I thought, I'm gonna risk it. And it arrived just as is and no manual or anything. Then I went to the UK, so my, my baby arrived about three days before I went to the UK, so it was, it was a lovely holiday but oh, I was so excited to come home so I could play with my new toy. <laughs> And when I was away, the woman messaged me, the woman I bought it from, and said she's found a couple of things, do I want them? And one of them being the manuals and some of the tools 
like a latch hook and some of the tools to remove the stitches from the machine. And I jumped at this ch like, chance because I could not find anything online. Nothing. This, this beautiful machine comes from, as I said, 1956. And here's the guarantee card that says 1956 on it. It is impossible to find replacement parts. The ones that I have found are really expensive, like a euro per needle, and there are 160 needles on this machine. So, yeah, you couldn't do the maths there. And I, I will have to warn anybody that is, I was going to say techie, the opposite of tech. I don't even know the word, good heavens. If you know how to like engineer things and maintain things and look after machinery, you should close your eyes, close your ears, because I will, I will offend and destroy your soul when you see what mayhem I got up to whilst trying to fix and clean my machine. <laughs> Being somebody that has never touched like any of this stuff before. I've never taken a machine apart. I barely even oiled anything. I've oiled my sewing machine about twice. I am not not great with these kind of things, so I was just I was determined. And I am shocked and just very pleased with my perseverance and what's the word? <laughs> perseverance and patience that I managed to do what I have done. Holy moly, that was very well packaged. Whew. Sides off. Taken off the front. Now to take these babies out. Mm, yummy, yummy. <laughs> Let's get that clean, shall we? So the first bath. It's still kind of dirty though, so another bath is needed. And it's getting cleaner. Not quite all of it off yet, but getting there. Now individually oiling every piece and putting it back together. Six hours later. All the way. I am trying to name my machine. Usually I get an item, I get something and I immediately pick it up in a random name comes to me and I know that this thing is called Patrick or Nigel or Julia or whatever but no name was coming to me and I, I was going with male names and then suddenly I thought maybe it's female and then Frida came to me so I may be naming my machine Frida I just I'm waiting to see if that's the right name there's Hilda or Frida <laughs> anyway so because there are no parts to replace it with, unless 
you find random people on the internet that might have some parts, which I am currently waiting on a part. But thankfully, the woman who sent me these, who sent the machine and the extra parts, sent some tools, which was so good because I have been struggling to find parts for my machine. I am so confused. There are many different types of knitting machine in the world. This one is one of the earliest like household. It was designed for housewives post-war. I'll actually link a website, I think it's a museum here in Berlin, uh, that has a really great little description. The description is very short, but there's a video, not video, there's a recording that goes along with, I think it's taken from one of the museums, and it explains the history of the Knitax, or Knitax, and how it came about, and what its history was, and where it was built, and how it died out. Basically, it was invented in like 1950s ish to help housewives post war make clothes quickly and cheaply for their family. And I've seen, you may actually remember if you watched my video from when I went to Sweden, I went to Stockholm and I actually bought what I thought was a vintage knitting magazine, a knitting pattern booklet. It was actually a Knitax M2 uh, manual. So I have this manual in Swedish and in German. And that's how I kind of came across the Knitax. And then I saw it in some of the knitting magazines. And that's why I looked for a Knitax. I'm going to say Knitax because it's easier for me but I know that it is actually pronounced Knitax <laughs> in Germany. So yes, I know that my manual from Sweden is from 1954, and I can't really see any information earlier than that of this machine coming out, because it mentions, in this museum, it mentions, like, um, innova in what is it? innovations from 1956. So I'm not really 100% sure when this machine first came out, but I'm going to assume at least 1954. So this is a very early version of the Kinetax. And the manuals, I have two. This is, one of them must have come with the, with the 1956 purchase, but one of them is a bit more modern. But I, there, there are no dates, so I don't know how old it is, but they have slightly different patterns. This one has some fun ones with some mittens, whereas this one is almost a one-to-one -one of my Swedish manual. What's funny is, this machine was made in Berlin, so it's where it was, it's returned to where it was made, and they did sell their patent to other countries, so you can find this machine in a version. You can find different ones from different years, so if you bought this machine in 1958, 60, 62, 70, the company went out of business in the 70s. So it's anywhere between 54 and 70 something. They had different versions that they knew and improved, so to speak and they all function slightly differently and there are modern versions of this. So getting the right parts, I'm just getting patterns to fit that machine, getting help was difficult because in the UK this is called a Knit Master 4500. In America it's a Knit King but they also have a different like, machine called Knit King which has nothing to do with Knit, knit Axe and they have different models. So after this one came one that was more automated and it had extra things. This one you tension, just you hold the yarn and you put it over the machine and slide the rail, as you'll see. That's how you tension it, that's it. But slightly later, 
and it is actually mentioned in this book actually they have tension balls and you it kind of hangs and sorts the tension out for you and then a little bit later there's a Nitax Automat I think it's called where you it looks a bit more like the modern ones now where it, it tensions through the carriage whereas my one doesn't so when I have asked for help on the internet people have said oh you need to do this you need to do that you need to do this but that's all for a completely different machine you'll often see that people have weights on their knitting machines when on the fabric lots of people were telling me oh you need to add weights that's the problem for the issue I was having this machine is very specifically designed not to have weights but it has these special like black things called sinkers which pushes the fabric underneath uh, other issues I was having people said you've got to change the sponge bar this machine does not have a sponge bar so no and in the UK there's a thing I basically where the needles are to keep the needles in place there's a needle retainer bar and in England it seems that they just had a piece of cotton inside and over time it would like, fray and die so you replace this cotton and then but my one has a metal bar which is perfectly fine it doesn't need replacing so getting my head around a knitting machine and having so much information uh, and none of it necessarily being correct was very overwhelming but I can confirm success has been had I am still not I'm not perfect by far none of what I have done so far is perfect it is a massive undertaking to learn how to use a, a vintage knitting machine um, I definitely do not regret my purchase I am so happy with my purchase and it has been quite fun actually to like try and learn and figure out stuff not necessarily by myself because I have had manuals and and uh, vague bits of help from the internet the problem is that a lot of people will say here's a Nitax YouTube watch that but it's not the same Nitax as the one I have it's like a different countries like the English one it's not quite the same and the parts that I have or don't have they do and or it's a modern version so it's been it's been fun and stressful but very rewarding and what's interesting is the German book has way more information than the English version. I did download an English, the Knit, the Knit Master 4500, which sounds like Harry Potter to me, <laughs> like Nimbus 2000. But I, I found that the English manual was missing so much that the German one had, and the Swedish one has almost the same. It's kind of a combination, really, of the two. It doesn't have everything that's in the German, but it does have more than the English one. Um, so it's been very fun to learn I am still learning goodness me am I still learning but I did want to take you on a journey with my machine and me learning how to use it and me progressing through and trying to finish an item now if you know me if you have watched any of my YouTubes before you will know that I like to challenge myself and I get quite bored and I lose motivation if something is too easy. So if I can knit a jumper like and make it much more complicated, I will. If I want to knit something flat that was in the round, I will. I just like I I seem to just enjoy setting challenges up for myself. So instead of being like a normal person, learning how to use a machine, doing some test swatches, that would have been very, very good and easy. I decided to make a t-shirt. 
<laughs> why not just make a garment straight away? And that pole garment has been through a lot. It's not like, I'm gonna put these down because I'm gripping them with, with might and it's very hot in here. <laughs> so I shouldn't be sweating all over them. Instead of doing like a small test square and learning how to cast on and cast off and increase and decrease, I decided I'll make a top that has 108 stitches for one side and 108 for the other because this is a flatbed knitting machine. Everything is flat, you can't do in the round, it's not circular, it, it's seaming all the way. So yeah, 216 stitches on, just to cast on. And, uh, well, 108, but you know what I mean. So when I messed up and dropped stitches or knocked them all off the machine, it was 108 stitches to fix. And there are several, there were several times I regretted this decision, but overall, warts and all, I have a completed item. <laughs> but I want you to go through the process of watching the, the, the just stress of it all. <laughs> I already just started unraveling my swatch before showing you. Oops. So this is seven stitches by 13 rows in one inch. I never do test swatches, as you know, but now I have my machine, it doesn't take so long. But um, it doesn't really help because I don't know if I like that or not. Um, maybe I'll try in the la tension. After knocking all of them off, I have individually put 108 stitches back on my machine. That was interesting. Some of them went on easier than others. If a hole or two have occurred. Hmm. Just so far, one issue. <laughs> Well, other than this complete mess, but <laughs> shh. That is a lifeline. Where's my camera? Hello. So I seem to have tested everything in one go. I've learned how to increase, how to decrease, how to rescue a stitch, how to fix a dropped purl stitch, because if you've seen the footage, you'll know the purl side faces you. So when you drop a stitch, I've only ever really done it on the knit side. And now I have to do it on the purl. I have learned how to do lots of stuff. Hopefully that doesn't happen again though. 
because I would really like to make this t-shirt. <laughs> Every time it gets stuck around here. Not always there, sometimes around here, but stuck nonetheless. It's driving me insane. I was so focused on trying to do increases that I ended up knitting too many rows. So I am now ripping out the white row. So learning new tricks, learning how to undo a row of knitting. <laughs> and we'll see <laughs> how long it takes. Okay, I've taken it off the needles because this is driving me insane. So at the moment it's just like this. <laughs> not really sure what to do. It does seem that there are a couple of problem children here that I will have to try and figure out. But I don't know what the actual problem is, I just know that they get stuck. Okay, this is rather strange. So if I press forward to it, then it will go across. So the problem child is where's <laughs> this one? doing this to myself. I just rehung every single stitch but I'm facing it the wrong way. It needs to be faced the other way so that pearl side faces. This is 120 stitches that I just took off. <laughs> oh goodness. So one thing that took me by surprise was when I told a few people I'm getting, I've bought a knitting machine, they're like, oh, but I really like knitting. Why would you get a machine so it can do it for you? And I got a bit confused by this because I didn't buy a knitting machine to just to stop knitting. I love knitting. It's not a replacement for knitting whatsoever. It's a different hobby. It's a completely different skill. You do not need to know how to knit to use a knitting machine. There is almost nothing that's the same, <laughs> except that the end result is knitted fabric. It's not the same hobby, and I'm not replacing my, my love of knitting with a machine. It's an addition to my fibre crafts, my fibre hobbies. Originally, I wanted to get a machine so that it would do the ribbing for me on my vintage knits, and also if there are vintage jumpers or skirts or dresses or whatnot that have an extensively long amount of stockinette, I wanted it to do that because I find that a, a bit tedious, a bit boring, not always. I do enjoy a little bit of stockinette here and there. I'm not opposed to it. It's just, I, it's kind of a two, two fold thing, two, Blah, 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 blah. There are kind of two reasons for it. One, I experience a lot of hand pain regularly because I have hyperextensiveness and a really poor ability to gain muscle, which obviously you need muscles to use when you're knitting. So for health reasons, I struggle with knitting for a long period of time. So I can only knit for maybe half an hour on a good day we're looking at an hour of knitting. So for the amount of stuff that I would love to make and practice and learn and do, an hour a day is not going to cut it really. And when things exist that can help, 
I am all for it. Completely for it. And as I just said, I really enjoy learning new new techniques, new tricks. I like knitting things that take more brain power, like um, colour works, two colours, three colours, four colours. Just that's my jam. That's what I enjoy doing. So having the machine to help me get past all the stockinette or and or the ribbing is fantastic to me. I know I don't actually need to explain myself because other people's opinions are totally irrelevant to my knitting joy, but they are the two main reasons that I wanted to get a knitting machine. And so I enthusiastically thought I could just cast on and knit my jumper and knit my stuff, but no, no, it takes a lot more. <laughs> it takes a lot more than just going la 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 la, all done. And this machine is a I've completely lost where I was. I'm going, I don't know where I was going with this, so I'm just gonna keep talking. And Emily in the future will cut this up and insert into the correct places. This knitting machine is a standard gauge knitting machine. So it's for lace weight, fingering weight, kind of sport weight territory. Then you get mid weight, mid gauge and bulky gauge. So I learnt the hard way that Gauge is a thing, gauge. The tension is a massive game changer on this machine and I really didn't understand what gauge, like tension on the tension dial I needed to put my machine on for the yarn. And the manual is very helpful. It says everyone has a different tension. So experiment. I, I don't know what tension one means. Like what needle is that referencing? Is that a 2.75? Is that a four millimeter? What is it? What is tension one? Like, it was, it's very vague. So if you use tension one on a lace weight or tension one on a sport weight, obviously you get different results. And I was struggling so much with my machine because my yarn was just getting stuck. I was getting the, the carriage jammed. I had so much stress and I had no idea what was wrong and the whole time it was because I thought using this like, sp like sport weight-ish yarn on tension 5, there are 10 tensions in total, would be okay. Oh boy, no, <laughs> no, 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 I was strangling my poor machine, it was struggling because I was trying to put through yarn at much too tight of a tension. I had no idea, didn't know that that was the issue, I because it moved through. Uh, it wasn't until I got, I, I dropped a bunch of stitches, I did all this chaos and I thought I'm just going to finish this off, I'm just going to hook it all back on the machine, put it on a really loose tension, like nine, and just take it off the machine. And what do you know, it just slid through like butter. and. Um, Tension 9 was what it needed. So I then decided I will just do the second panel on tension 9. Obviously, obviously the tension would be completely different on the front and the back, but I did not care. I just wanted this t-shirt, I wanted to use this yarn, I wanted to learn what, like, what I was doing, I wanted to practice. It's definitely a guinea pig of a project. And cotton, cotton yarn is so unforgiving when you see your mistakes. It's not like the fuzzy wool can blend it in and it looks okay. It's like, hey, hey, I'm a mistake and I'm right here. Yeah, see me? Yeah. That is what my poor, <laughs> my poor guinea pig t-shirt is. But I think it's really fun nonetheless. So I'm really pleased. And I will show you my amazing... <laughs> first knit. I haven't decided what's the front and what's the back because I love what was supposed to be the front as the front but I dropped all the stitches when I moved the carriage across and forgot to put the yarn in and they all dropped and I didn't know how to pick up stitches at that point so it looks super ugly and it's right on the front so 
that's annoying. But then on the other side, I ran out of yarn because the tension of the yarn was made to nine instead of five. And so the, the fabric, like the amount of yarn was used up faster. And I only had very small little balls of each color. So they ran out. So I had to make a designer decision and just have a white panel at the top. Which I don't think looks bad, it's just I much prefer the stripy side. So this is, it's so cute. This is a 1950s inspired top. Admittedly, the side here was supposed to be moss stitch, but for the life of me, I could not figure out how to do that. I only just about figured out how to do increases. But I think I now know, I know how to do it as ribbing, but I still don't know how I would do moss stitch because I don't know how to pick up the stitch facing the other way, if that makes sense. Like it, it would be knit purl, knit purl, knit purl, knit purl. And I can only pick up as a knit. I don't know how to pick up as a purl on the machine because when you're knitting on the machine, the purl side faces you at all points, which is so confusing because everything you want to do, like a colour work chart or a lace or something, is going to be reversed and any stitch you drop I had to learn how to do it on a purl side which I've always avoided by just turning my work and doing it on the knit. So I don't know how to do moss stitch which is what was supposed to be here. I, I could have done ribbing but alas I didn't. Hang on. Hello again, my husband just got back from work and completely frightened the life out of me. So. I have no idea where I was. I think I was just telling you how I didn't understand the moss stitch. But as you can see, this is supposed to be the front. But the mistakes are all in this light one. So this is the supposed to be the front. Although I just, I like the other one more. <laughs> there are still some mistakes on this side, but not as many. But yeah, the gauge is a lot more open on this side versus this side, so that's a lot stiffer. But I did manage to seam them up at the same place, I just pulled it slightly. The seams are chaos. I, whenever I knit by hand, I knit my um, ends in as I go, so I don't have ends at the end. But I haven't learned how to do that yet. I think there is a way that you can weave in ends on the machine. I just don't know yet. So I did some <laughs> some chaos. I I seamed it, and then I just plaited the ends all together. I don't know that it will stay. That is a problem. But we'll see. I kind of half secured them with some white. It is bulky. Um, but I've only tried this on once and it was fine. But if it annoys me, I can always seam them in. It's just with cotton, I find that it always pokes through. So you'll just get really obvious like, thick bits. So, I don't think I've got any... This one wasn't, there weren't as many ends. But, it's fine, it's fine. But I'll tell you what's not fine. As you may know if I have put the footage in or not, we'll see. The rib. The irony is, I got my machine and it came with a ribber attachment and I was so excited but I needed to clean it. I Once I had discovered that I wasn't very good at cleaning machines with water and citric acid, I then realised I had to buy like proper stuff like actual oil and actual cleaning stuff so I left the ribber until I had the right materials. Right materials arrived and I got to work. But I then discovered 
that. First of all, the river is slightly damaged, and I'm not sure if it was damaged by getting here or if it was damaged by being left for 30 odd years in a basement. But I don't think that's causing the issue, but the needles are kind of, they're not, the needles are not all straight, some of them are bent, and I have no idea how to get replacement ribbon needles for this machine. There are new needles for new knitting machines, but they're not compatible with my machine because needles are different. They have this little head thing on the needle in a different place. Like I can't find one that's the same size and width to fit into the grooves of the machine. And yeah, so some of the needles are bent. Some of them don't fit in the grooves anymore. So I've had a little fiddle around to try and relocate some of the needles. Um, the I did oil it so it does move across, but it just is not working. I I don't know. I don't know if it's not fitting into the machine properly because of me. Uh, I've seen only. I feel so lost and confused. I have seen a video on YouTube with a man who has really great videos and he makes it look so unbelievably easy and nothing that he does ever happens for me. <laughs> I found a couple of German videos that are more reality. They'll go whoop and then things all come apart and they have to fix it. This Dutch guy just goes la 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 look at this it's all working marvellously and this does not ever happen. His machine has to be more modern, even if it's by five years or ten years, more modern than mine because his river will slot into holes into the side of his machine, whereas my machine has been sent back to the manufacturer to have the alteration added and then sent back, and then it has like flat rails that slide in, but you have to slide them in at some kind of angle and it's really hard to get it to slot in and click <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice and it didn't every time I tried to cast on which is really cumbersome by the way it can't it can't hold on to the stitches and I've looked up a few YouTubes and everyone says oh it's just perfectly normal on this antique machine that it won't hold on to the stitches and they'll drop them on. And I just think that can't be normal. Like, people were used to this. Like, it, it was used, so it has to work. But I'm definitely going to have to try doing some small squares and seeing if I can get it to work because it did not want to work at all. Hello everyone. So apologies if you can hear a screaming child and my husband having a shower, but hey ho. I wanted to give an update. <laughs> this is so horrendously obvious, but basically I discovered this I knitted on much too tight of a tension and that is why I was struggling and things were getting stuck and it was just horrendous. So when I was towards the very very end I had I had a massive issue here and my machine was unhappy and oh gosh I've dropped a stitch. I will have to go fix that. Um, yeah, it kept getting very upset here, so I put the tension all the way up to nine, and like, not I didn't cast it off, it's still on a loopy thing, but I th then discovered it went across so easily, so the problem was me all along. I had this on too tight of a tension, so bringing it over here, I have the next part. As you will see, the tension is very different. This is the back, of course. It's a lot more open, which I don't love the look as much, but obviously if my machine is a fine gauge machine, it's not going to handle DK on a tight tension. So it's done a marvelous job on a higher tension. I'm just slightly concerned that the two parts are not going to fit together because obviously they're different. So I'm hoping I'm just going to pull and stretch on the other one and it'll fit this. And you'll 
Also notice I ran out of the colours because this being a bigger gauge meant more yarn was taken up. So I didn't have enough to do the rest of this in the colours. But it's totally fine. I'm hoping this will be the front. But of course I'm going to wash, I'm going to block it and seam it together and see how it looks. And just hope that it looks nice. Otherwise it's going to be a bit of a fail. But I'm going to be optimistic and say it's going to work. Here we are again, but this time cleaning the river. But I've just noticed it is actually damaged. I really hope this doesn't affect it working because it's also damaged here. This is making me very nervous. The needles are also really dirty. So I don't think I'll be doing any ribbing anytime soon. There is one other problem that quite stiff and some of them just do not budge, like at all. I will try and take, well, I need to take this out, but I can't get the screws out, so I need my husband to get the screws out. And then oh, I can get all the needles out and ugh, try and clean in here somehow. I am super concerned about all this because that could affect the carriage crossing <sighs> so I don't know I can't believe how new this looks it looks so modern <laughs> and the underside of this it just looks so aside from the dust such good condition it's just such a shame that the damage, the damage that's on it. Gosh, I hope it works. Please excuse the in, not instruction, <laughs> the construction in the background. Yeah, I really don't know if this is working. I'm pretty sure they should be going under the latches and not sitting above them. This is incredibly confusing. Okay, this is what it's looking like. Not a hundred percent sure if it's correct, but I really hope so. Ah, my first tiny bit of ribbing. All of the stitches are cast on in a precarious way and let's hope I don't have to redo that. <laughs> I think I'd go as far I think I would go as far as to say that did not work. This is the least fun. Attempt number 150,000. A new way to try and do rib. <laughs> I finally did it, and I don't think I like it. <laughs> okay, update. This is it after... How do, I, how do I explain that? This is it after knitting it and missing out on a stitch every two stitches. And now I am individually using a little hook and going boop, 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 all the way up to the top to make it look like rib. Or well, not look like rib, it is rib. <laughs> Admittedly, it would have been better if I had it on this side, but I couldn't figure out how to hang up the hooks from the purl side because generally with knitting machines, the purl side faces you and I had it the other way around so that I could hang up all of these individual stitches because I couldn't figure it out on the purl side. But now that I'm putting it, like bringing all these up, 
it probably would have looked nicer to have the rib that way. But ho-hum. <laughs> Live and learn. Next time. Okay, so, so far, it looks like this. It's all folding in. <laughs> That's to ex be expected with a stockinette, but... Um, my mistake. And I put the ribbing on the wrong way, so that is potentially the front. And it looks like that on the front, which is kind of ugly, but I don't care. It took me all day, like eight hours or something to do this. <laughs> and I still have this side to go. <sighs> <At all. clears throat> so I decided to do what was originally suggested if you look at the manual for the original Nitex machine it's all saying you can do rib, you can do mock rib just by doing this. So you essentially knit it all and then drop the stitches and pick them all up one by one and put them back onto the machine so it's a rib. I did that and it took so long. It took hours. I could genuinely have knitted this rib by hand in like an eighth of the time. It took hours. I'm talking like 12 hours I think from start to finish because basically I knitted the front, I knitted this section and I just cast on here because I didn't know anything about rib at the time. Cast on here, knitted up and then had to pick up all these stitches but unfortunately I picked them all up the wrong direction and so the rib is inside out because it should be that side and not that side but hey ho lessons have been learned I also I wanted to put in a safety line and I thought you would just knit a row with the yarn so I used this random stretchy yarn here with the intention that if a mistake happened I could rip back down to it. That is not how it works. That That's not it. So I have this random sock yarn. Then I thought it's fine when I get to the end I will just rip back and put the stitches on there. But when I found out that's not how it works, I was not going to undo all of those stitches. But I had intended to knit, pick those up and knit down. So when I put it on my machine the wrong way, I ended up doing two or three rows of pearl stitch. So yeah, it's a definite like Frankenstein, higgledy piggledy guinea pig. But I'm really proud of it nonetheless. It's really fun and happy and I I am still glad that I made this as my first thing <laughs> because it's just so happy <laughs> and the, all the happy colours got me through the confusion and stress. If it was something that I didn't really care about I wouldn't have bothered but because I knew I wanted this I was happy to spend 12 hours individually picking up every stitch and then learning how to bind off and I did start with a sewn bind off to be stretchy but that was so tedious and so hard with all of this thread it was kind of like a um, Italian bind off like a sewn bind off and trying to get a needle to go behind and through all these like a hundred and yeah a hundred and eight needles sticking out and get your hand behind the needles to get through the individual loops it was a nightmare so then i went back to the one i knew but that was so tight like there was absolutely no stretch whatsoever at all in this cotton <laughs> so then i learned a new one so i did learn lots of different techniques in the hours and i did get a bit faster by the end but i am not 
doing that again in a hurry. I need to get my river to work because then it'll be done in three minutes. I could have done this in three minutes if I knew how to get this river to work. <laughs>